Hey guys, welcome along to the channel, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Um, I haven't done a review for a little while, so I thought I'd do a couple of uh, couple of kit reviews here for you. This one I bought started. Um, I bought this many, many years ago in a show. And this one I bought many years ago because I thought, oh, it's nice, a Tamiya, this is called a Tamiya white box. So this is basically a Tamiya 148 scale um, World War II Jeep. I think it's a Willys. And this one here is also a Willys. This, they're, they're actually calling it a Jeep Willys MB. Um, this one is a quarter ton 4x4 light vehicle. Obviously licensing has become too expensive for these model companies to pay. So the 35th scale version of this kit, they actually call it a Willys MB on the box. I want to give you a quick bit of background. I actually own a Ford GPW myself. The Ford GPW basically looks to the novice exactly the same as a Willis Jeep. Um, but Willys is the name that sort of everybody, you know, that, that's what everyone associates. A World War II Jeep is known as a Willys. Jeep is a name that was given to them somehow. I don't know. Um, I don't think anybody really knows how the name came about. Um, but Basically, the Jeeps that we know of today, so anything sort of after the war, were made by AMC, Chrysler or Fiat. So the name Jeep, as in you see here, Jeep with the trademark. Jeep with a trademark is a name given to off-road vehicles which were made after the war. Um, and the Jeep name has just stayed with them and it stayed with whoever sort of bought the license to make them um, and now that happens to be Fiat who bought out Chrysler um, and I think Chrysler bought out AMC today or AMC went bust or whatever and Chrysler took over. So these mustn't be confused with the Jeeps you know of today. No part of the World War II Jeeps were made by AMC, by Chrysler or by Fiat. Um, they were either Willis or they were Ford. Um, just after the war a company called Hotchkiss in France took over um, and they made them under license and there is a lot of parts which are made by a company called Willys of France which I think became Hotchkiss I'm not sure if you know the actual truth tell me in the in the comments below but I know that the the French carried on using these Jeeps well well after the war um, and you will often find Hotchkiss M201s I think they're called um, which are fake World War II Jeeps. They're actually not genuine World War II Jeeps. You can buy many, many parts for these Jeeps now, which are made by WOF, Willys of France. Um, and those parts are better than a lot of the copy parts that are available on the market today. So many people, myself included, um, if you can't find NOS parts, which means new old stock, which means basically old original parts made by Willys or Ford, then your next best thing is Willys of France, uh, which is basically Hotchkiss, I believe. And then after that, you've got your reproduction parts. And if you are thinking about getting a Jeep and restoring it, beware. There is some crap out there. There is some absolute diabolical, awful stuff out there. So um, just be careful what you buy and buy it from reputable dealers. So anyway, back to the models. Um, this is a little 48 scale white box, as I say. I don't want to open any of the bags because I believe this kit is actually currently unavailable. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to go ripping into it and that because I don't really want to build it at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can see that it's simply two sprues of green plastic, one sprue of clear. And looking through the bag, we can see it's very, very crisply molded. The detail on there is lovely. Um, and also we note that on the back of the spruce here it actually says Tamiya 2007 if you can see that there. So scale mates are incorrect here in 2010, maybe they'll see this and change it. But the actual axle detail, you've got the steering arms on there. It's lovely, you've got the um, transfer case and the handbrake there. Um, handbrake looks a little bit simple but this is 48 scale and then the rear axle there. We've got the exhaust with the um, bash plate underneath springs with integral shock absorbers on them and then we've got the chassis here and what this is why I think it's a Willys because it's got the uh, the round well I know it's a Willys it's got the round front cross member that's the immediate giveaway guys if you don't know what you're looking for Ford GPW has a top hat 
upside down U section, front cross member, Willis has a round section, although the first, the early, very early Fords also have that round section, but um, Ford changed the design of the chassis and, and made it, I think, more productionized, um, but also made it from thinner section steel. Um, lovely front grille there, which is uh, very, very nice. Uh, at the moment my grill is actually being used as a fire guard. It looks quite... If I can find the picture, I'll put the picture up for you now. So yeah, there's my, my grill being used as a fire guard. Um, so yeah, all in all, very, very nice. Very, very crisp. Very, very clean. Um, nice sort of wrinkled um, canvas finish on the seats there. So yeah, lovely kit. We've got our very simple decals, which is just basically upside down. Which is just basically our star for the bonnet, a couple of stars for the sides, and some serial numbers. And we've got our instruction sheet, which is a simple fold out affair. And you can see we've got some very, very simple, you know, adding the one piece um, sort of axle drivetrain unit there, and then adding the leaf springs over the top, and the exhaust system with the bash plate, assembling up the tub. Here there's no sort of real structure detail on the tub by the look of it. It's telling us to drill a hole, that's obviously for the gun mount. Then we're adding the lenses to the headlights, adding the grill on so you get a nice effect with the radiator in there behind the grill. Fuel tank going under the seat, bulkhead going in, uh, transfer box levers, gearbox levers. And then we've got the three seats here being built up. Dashboard going in with the cowl going on the top. And then assembling our wheels. Um, adding on the uh, the bows for the um, for the uh, the canvas top. Sorry, guys, I had a sneeze there. Um, external fuel tank going on the back there, or jerry can, um, and then we've got our rifle going on the back of the windshield. Adding the clear parts, the um, axe and the shovel going on the side, and then we've got our machine gun going on the back here. Um, that's optional if you don't want to use it. I'm just wondering. You know, the chassis doesn't depict. The mount, they should, if it had a, a machine gun, there would be a, a circular plate on the chassis there, but it's not there. Um, so yeah, basically you can add the machine gun or not, depending on how you want to build it. So there we are guys, all in all, a lovely little kit. As you can see, very, very small. Um, the actual tub is only, what is it, 60 millimeters long. So it's going to be a tiny little model. So if you're limited for space, it'd be a great little kit to build. So moving on from there, we've got this. This is the Hasegawa 48 scale Jeep. Um, they're calling it Follow Me Jeep Willys MB. It's got this lovely um, checkerboard pattern on it. And basically, if you don't know about the Follow Me Jeeps, look up on the, on Google. I'll tell you all about them. These things went around airfields and made sure the aircraft went to the right um, went to the right locations in the airfield wherever they needed them to be. So this is obviously again, it's a small kit. Comes with some figures. Um, X48 number 11. Um, I believe this kit is about 30 quid or something. You can get it in a standard, just you know, like this sort of kit, just a standard um, World War II livery rather than the um, Follow Me. Um, but I think it's about 30 pounds. It's, um, it's ridiculously expensive. So looking around the box on here, we've just got some instructions about telling us it's a, a model. <laughs> um, part number is 36011. And then we've got some vision here. We can do it in just in a normal scheme if we want to without the uh, all the checkerboard. 58 pieces, 70.5 millimeters long, um, 33 millimeters wide, and it's got some 11 pieces for the figures. So that's, as I said, I bought this um, many years ago, probably 15 years ago. I'd say. What's the date of the kit? Is there a date? 2007. So it can't have been that long ago. Must have been about 10 years ago I bought it then. Um, and it's had, I mean, I'm hoping all the parts are there. I don't, did I get this at a show? I think I bought this at a show. Um, and it was like 10 quid. I thought, yeah, I love that. Um, I mean, that's probably worth 10 quid. Um, and basically, yeah, I've printed out the, uh, the Eddard instructions, as I always do. And, um, and somebody's made a start on it and just started messing around with it a bit but the uh, see the decals here are still in the uh, in the bag there with just one sheet of um, 
of uh, the checkerboard there. We've got some figures here which are, yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think they're 2007 vintage. Um, we've got the radio gear that goes in the back of the, the Jeep there. Got the canvas top. There's the bows there for it. Got the wheels and tyres. Oh, yeah, not the best, but uh, I can't find a date on this kit at all. Um, it says here 2007 Daimler Chrysler. I think it's probably earlier than that looking at it. Um, it's not a patch on the Tamiya kit at all, you can see. Um, you've got the front grille there. And there's the rear panel for the body. Got the um, radiator, cylinder head, air cleaner, oil filter, top hose and everything there. Springs and shock absorbers, that's the side of the engine, that's the front of the engine. So um, yeah, see this shovel and spade all moulded in one with the straps and everything in it. And it's all quite softly moulded. Not very nice at all really. So not really much of a patch on the... Um, that's been filled in there. Tiny little tub. This one has got the detail. Oh, it says here 2007, maybe it is. Um, although it looks like it's had some polishing work done in the mould. So maybe they've removed what it used to say there and added here the um, the trademarks. At least this one's got the uh, detail under the tub for the little top-up sections. And then we've got a chassis here with integral sump. So there we go. Um, instructions. Well, look at the the photo etch kit. There's quite a lot to it. We've got some replacement radio faces there, um, replacement instrument panel. Actually, there's a hell of a lot of here being replaced. A lot of handles and stuff being replaced. That's the front bumper mountings there. Um, yeah, very uh, very comprehensive little set. Um, here we are removing the rear little bumperettes and then uh, fitting the photo etch ones, removing the front bumper completely, adding these with the actual um, fabricated bumper. So that's going to look pretty good. Um, adding the piece in the back, that actually would have been a block of wood there. And then we're going to take the um, take the bash plate off of the exhaust and add the photo etch one. Replace the fan with photo etch. Uh, what's that? That's a that's the lead from the fuel pump up to the carburetor there. Replacing that with a piece of photo etch, probably better off using a piece of lead. And we've got these little eyelets that go on the outside of the um, of the dashboard. They they actually screw in. Um, and we're adding. There's a lot to this. Paper. Um, then we're going to make up the horn from photo etch and then we've got a uh, fire extinguisher here we're making up and adding on the inside replacing all the pedals replacing the gearbox cover there um, this is the in the rear end this is like a little uh, section that's where the can't think what clips in behind that now um, then we've got a mesh for the grill we've got a mesh for the front of the grill these are the little um, parts that go on top of the headlights. I don't know if anybody knows the headlights in a Jeep, you open the bonnet, there's a wing nut, you undo the wing nut and then you can swivel the headlight up um, for you to change the bulb but also it gives you light over the engine bay if you need to work on the engine at night. And then we've got the, this is the, um, this is a, a holder here for a, uh, I'm guessing for a fire extinguisher or something. This is an internal bracket for the uh, hold down clamps, we've got the bonnet hinge there. Then we've got this is the tray that holds the um, lubrications chart and then there's a um, fabricated section inside the bonnet there. They've really gone to time with this on the detail uh, for 48 scale. It's quite incredible. And then we've got the these are the hood hold the uh, windscreen hold down latches there. And we've got the hold down latches for the actual hood itself. Wooden blocks going on the bonnet on the hood. Our six volt regulator there and then we're replacing the the cover over the, um, oh, what's that called? The blackout, not the blackout light. Oh, um, I can't think what it's called now. I'm sure somebody can tell me in the comments. I'll have thought of it by then. And then we've got our braces here for the um, bows at the back. 
and then our strap going on our jerry can on the back be careful putting the jerry can on the back of your jeep um they weren't actually fitted until i think it was late 43 um up to then they weren't fitted at the factory i think some field um personnel fitted them but a jerry can although we see it as a very common item on the back of our jeeps um not really on there till till late 43 um and then we've got a plate here this is going to be for our radio if you want to add that for a radio aerial um, then I got our mounting there for our spare wheel, which is very nice, very much better than a plastic lump. Then we're adding in the um, the parts for the, the windscreen actually slides open. These are the stays. We've got a, a photo etch um, gun cover there, and then still going. And we've got more bits and pieces for our bow loops. And then we've got here. This is a another fire extinguisher um, holder. I'm assuming it's fire extinguisher can't think what else it would be and then we've got our this is nice this little piece here that's a very thin section of steel that the axe goes up under a fabricated strap um that's obviously where that person's filled those holes in and then we can remove all this detail here replace all the radio gear with all these little fabricated radios here so yeah all in all a lovely set from Eddard. Um, which is going to make a very simple kit into something really, really nice. So that will look really, really good. So there we are. That's our two 148 scale kits. Um, let's call them Jeeps. <laughs> they're, they're both Willis MBs. Uh, that's the review of those two. And I've given you a little bit of a background about the actual real things as well. Um, mine's a 44 GPW, um, but it's a bit of a salad it's got a, a willis engine um and it's got a it's got the ford gpw gearbox um it's got a lot of ford f mark parts on it um and it's got a hotchkiss gearbox which is i don't know how, how, how the hell that's got in there it actually came from the philippines so um yeah the axles are ford at least and the body is acm um, after I think it was 19 late 43 very early 44 uh, both Ford and Willis were getting their bodies from a company called ACM and it was called a comp composite body so anything after January 44 Willis and Ford would have had the same body um, because it came from the same company a company called ACM um, up to that originally um, Willis started buying their bodies from ACM to their specification then Ford started buying them to their specification they've got different uh, footrests at the rear they've got different toolbox covers and everything and then I think after January 44 everything was standardized so there was just one body um, my body is actually a 45 so a lot of these Jeeps obviously at the end of the war were totaled so you may have had a really nice body but with a destroyed chassis so they got rebuilt that way um, they were also rebuilt in service um, so basically a jeep would have gone in one end of a production line been completely stripped and then all the parts were refurbished and at the end all the parts came back together again to make another jeep they didn't necessarily or they didn't not necessarily they, did, they didn't at all match parts up so the engine that came out of the willis could have ended up going back into a GPW um, and generally once they were rebuilt they were all painted green um, as were all the Willys engines but when the Ford engines originally came out of the factory they were painted light grey um, so they're called salads um, mine's actually a salad uh, it's basically it's a mix-up of different parts all chucked together um, there are quite a few out there of matching numbers which means they never actually went to one of these um, motor pools so they uh, they ended up you know you can you can get these jeeps but they fetch a a very high price uh, and that basically means you have the chassis um, the engine the gearbox everything all the numbers all match uh, I'm not sure about the body because the body would have been ACM on something later but if you get an early early jeep with all matching numbers it's worth a lot a lot of money probably more than twice what's mine what mine's worth so anyway there we go guys that's our i'm waffling that's our review of the 48 scale kits um what i'm going to do now is a review of some 35th scale kits 
so sit back and enjoy this one and look for the 35th scale one coming soon. Bye for now.